Dear brothers and sisters in Iman, today on Sunday, June 14th, we are having our first class of uh, Quranic studies and uh, for these classes and these studies we have decided to discuss the 10 major themes of Quran. In these 10 major themes of Quran, inshallah, we will focus on the major concepts and the major teachings of Quran very much relevant to our daily life, our family life, and our community life. But today as the first lecture, I would like to have an introduction to Quran itself and have rather a little brief presentation only uh, explaining the place and the role of Quran in our lives. And then inshallah from the next Sunday at 11 o'clock we will get into those uh, the discussions of uh, Quranic themes or the themes of Quran, the major themes of Quran. We need to understand first of all what is the status of Quran or what is the place of Quran in Islam and then of course in a life of a Muslim or in a Muslim community. Quran is a message of God. If we want to define what is Quran, it is message of God. And basically this message of God makes our prophet the messenger of God. He is messenger of God because he has brought this message to the humanity. Of course this message was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Jibreel and then prophet communicated this message to the humanity. So Quran is message of God. And we all understand that uh, when it comes to paying attention to a message, we all know that it depends whose message it is. And if we know that this is a message of God, then we need to really uh, take it serious and we need to pay attention to it because this is, this book is message of God. It is a revealed, revealed word of God. It is the revealed word of God and that is why it is uh, it stands very high actually it is the most high after the most high of course allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most high and then right after allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself comes the word of god that revealed word of god the kalam of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you want to make an hierarchy, then it comes right after God himself. The messengers, 
the prophets and everyone else comes after that so the status of quran is higher than anybody else other than of course allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whose word is this book and that is why even the prophet or the messenger who is preaching this word of god and who is bringing this to the humanity he himself has to follow it so quran doesn't follow the prophet or the messenger it's a messenger who is supposed to follow this word of god and then preach and teach this word of god to the humanity so you understand now the status and the position of quran that even the messenger of allah muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam himself has to follow this and this is not what i am saying from myself look at this ayat chapter 10 sura yunus and verse number 109 where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding his messenger by saying wattabi' ma yuha ilayk and follow what is being revealed to you so whatever we are revealing to you as our revelation you even if you are the messenger you have to follow it and then similar ayat we have in chapter 6 sura al an'am chapter 6 ayat 106 where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands his prophet by saying ittabi' ma uhiya ilayka min rabbik and follow what has been revealed to you from your lord so whatever has been revealed to you from your lord meaning this revealed word al quran you have to follow it and in the beauty of islam is that when it is presenting a constitution or a law then nobody is above that law when islam is presenting quran as the law and as the constitution then making even the messenger and the prophet who is bringing this to humanity and the one who is teaching it he himself is also not above the law but he has to follow the law and that is the best inspirational example which we can have from the islamic belief and it's a system of governance that when prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam is bringing this constitution from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to humanity he himself is the first one that who is following it and he never went against it he never claimed that he is above the law or he is above the quran rather he himself is always the first one to follow it and this word of god or this quran which was given to prophet actually as a help from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as a mean to use to guide humanity and to guide the society and to establish that uh, islam uh, on the face of earth so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him this book prophet he was not given anything else other than this book and then of course the uh, noble family of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam as ahlul bait that who had to also join the prophet and help the prophet 
and then later on the companions and the community uh, they came along but the first thing which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the Prophet that was this book Quran Surah Ibrahim if you want to look at chapter 14 and its uh, first ayat ayat number 1 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alif Lam Ra Kitabun Anzalnahu ilayka لتخرج الناس من الظلمات إلى النور ألف لام را those are الحروف المقطعات we don't translate that nobody knows their real meaning or translation and then this Allah says this is a book Quran we revealed it to you why did we reveal it to you لِتُخْرِجَ النَّاسِ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ So that you take out people from the darkness to the light. So the, the, the project or the, the job of the Prophet and the assignment of Prophet or the duty of Prophet or the mission of Prophet was to take out the people from darkness to the light. Society was in darkness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of his mercy, because he cares, he loves the humanity and his people and his creatures. So he sent the prophet, he sent the messenger and he sent the message, this Al-Quran, and he gave this Al-Quran to his messenger to use it. And by this book, by this revelation, by this revealed word of God, the messenger should take people out from the darkness to the light. Again, you look for yourself, Surah Ibrahim, chapter 14 and ayat number 1. So, that explains the status of the Quran that it's it's a miraculous book it's a powerful book it's a very very powerful book my brothers and sisters that revolution that revolution which prophet had brought in that society in a society where it was very difficult to change anything or to do anything Prophet was able to bring that revolution and change that society because of this word of God, with this word of God. And then the importance of this book is that Prophet repeatedly mentioned before he departed from this world that of course I am a human being and I will not live here forever but in my absence you will I am leaving two valuable entities behind me two valuable entities he refers to those two valuable entities as thaqalain inni tarikun fikumuth thaqalain I am leaving behind two very valuable entities. And these two valuable entities are now going to replace the Prophet. These two valuable entities are going to replace the Prophet. And of course they will continue the job which Prophet was used to do. Of taking the society out from the darkness to the light and keep guiding them, keep educating them, keep reminding them, keep uh, inspiring them, keep answering their questions and keep them connected with their creator, with their Lord, with their God. That is the job for Quran and Ahlul Bayt, Sakalain. So Prophet says, 
kitab Allahi wa itrati ahl bayt and again if we those who look little between the lines they can see that when prophet mentions two entities in which order he puts those two entities of course prophet is a man that whatever he says there is a meaning in it even when he puts two things in order and which one comes as number 1 and which one comes as number 2 there is a message and there is a message between the line and which explains their status and their position qala inni tarikun fikum athqalain i am leaving behind two valuable entities and those two entities are first kitab allah book of allah this quran and then wa itrati ahl bayti and then my family and of course if you will adhere these two entities and if you will read the book if you will follow the book and then if you will adhere with the infallible progeny and the family of prophet as your guides as your imams as your leaders and as those who will explain this book and those who will teach this book then you will never go out of the way and these both will lead you and guide you until the hode kosar we have a beautiful hadith in usool e kafi in volume 4 on page 407 which is very famous hadith it is in usool e kafi but it has been mentioned in our other books of hadith as well where prophet says fa idhal tabasat alaykum al fitan ka qita al layl al muzlim fa alaykum bil quran prophet knew that in his absence when he will leave this world the community will get into fitnas and those tests and trials and confusions and they will uh, get so much illusions and confusions about their deen and dunya and everything so prophet told them that when you face those illusions and confusions and fitnas and those fitnas will come as the dark nights ka keta al layl al muzlim as the dark night you won't be able to see what is right and what is wrong what is halal and what is haram what is true and what is fake who is right and who is not right in all those situations the advice of prophet is fa alaykum bil quran in those situations of fitna confusion illusion then you must look to the quran adhere with quran and quran will guide you and take you out from that darkness to the light fa innahu shafi'un mushaffa' because quran is that entity with when it does your when it does the intercession its intercession is accepted by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa mahilun musaddaq and it is a reporter and it when it will report to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about you its report is also certified and accepted by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah will accept when quran will report about the behavior of people and the attitude of people toward quran or toward the teachings of quran man ja'alahu imamahu qadahu ila al jannah aur man ja'alahu amamahu qadahu ila al jannah the word is uh, read in both ways he who 
makes Quran as his Imam. As in Quran we have that uh, Torah is referred as Imam also. Torah is a book and this book is also as guidance. It is Imam. Similarly, Quran itself is also an Imam. So Prophet says if he who takes Quran as his Imam and what is the job of Imam to lead, to guide. So he who takes Quran as his Imam Qadahu ilal Jannah. This Imam, this Quran will lead that person to the paradise. وَمَنْ جَعَلَهُ خَلْفَهُ سَاقَهُ إِلَى النَّارِ And he who puts Quran behind him and instead of uh, following it then the Quran will lead him to the hellfire because the position of Quran is that it should lead you from the front. So, or instead of using the word Imam, we use the word Amam. Man ja'alahu Amamahu. He who puts Quran in front of him, then Quran will lead him from front to the paradise. And the one who will put Quran behind him will never open the Quran. He who never opens the Quran, he who never reads the Quran, he who never follows the Quran, rather even uh, disobeys the teachings of Quran and goes against the teachings of Quran, then Quran will lead him to the hellfire. So that explains the importance of Quran, the importance of Qurans, that how important Quran is. So when we look in Quran itself, when we are talking about the themes, one of the themes can be Quran itself. If you count from Surah Al-Hamd till Surah Al-Nas, the word Al-Quran, just this word Al-Quran comes 58 times in Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this book Al-Quran 58 times by using just this particular name while Quran is referred in Quran by so many different names. But the most famous name is Al-Quran. And Al-Quran means it comes from Qara'a to read and Quran is that text which is supposed to be read. It is something which is being recited and being read. So now from here we can understand that if we have the Quran but if we don't read it and if we don't recite it then how we are dealing with it. Meaning how can we justify that while this book is supposed its name is Al-Quran. Its name is Quran Yani it's a book which is being recited. It is being read. So Quran is not revealed to keep it as tabarruk, just as a barakat at home or give it in the wedding to our daughters for example or as a gift to uh, ulama and to other people or when we are going to travel then use the Quran and just go walk from underneath it. Quran it is supposed to be recited. It is supposed to be read. And that is the meaning of the word Quran. You know the Qiraat e Quran. Qiraat. Qara'a yakra'o. From that. Then the other name of this Quran, which is in Quran, that is Al Kitab. Zalik al Kitab la raiba fi. So Al Kitab. Many times in Quran, Quran is referred as Al-Kitab. And we all understand what is the purpose of Kitab. Why do we buy the Kitab? And how we are supposed to use a Kitab? Kitab is not for kissing. 
and kitab is not only for decoration kitab when we buy a kitab when we buy a book from a book store basically what do we do with that we read it we are supposed to read it we are supposed to learn from it and then of course this is a book which allah says that you must read you must understand you must reflect upon and then you must follow it the word al kitab comes actually more than the word al quran i didn't count but it is much more than the word al quran and then of course one of the names of quran which is mentioned in quran is al furqan al furqan shahr ramadan allazi unzila fihi al quran hudal lin nas and then bayyinat min al huda wal furqan and there is a chapter by the name of al furqan chapter 25 in quran that means al furqan and al furqan means differentiator so one of the jobs of quran is to differentiate between right and wrong between the truth and the falsehood and how can we differentiate haq from batil right from wrong if we don't read quran if we don't understand quran most of us always are confused and have illusions or make the wrong uh, conclusions and wrong positions on issues even being good muslims the problem is because we don't read this book which helps us to differentiate which helps us to understand what is right and what is wrong what is haq and what is batil so this book first it is al quran it is al kitab and then it is al furqan then also since allah subhanahu wa taala has mentioned it in quran that humanity uh, many time has gone into the darkness and the dark ages whenever a prophet left this world uh, then sooner or later his community again went back to the darkness they abandoned the book and the teachings of their prophet and they went back to their again that jahiliya so whenever allah subhanahu wa taala sends his prophet or his new book so he considers that book as noor one of the names of this quran is noor light so if we as 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 we all understand that uh, we when we enter in our home the first thing what we do we turn on the light when we enter in our room we turn on the light outside when we go we go in the light or we take light with us then we can see so this quran serves as a light as a noor it illuminates it shows us the path it shows us the guidance and then right after that uh, another word another name which quran uses for itself that is the word huda the guidance we as human beings when we look at ourselves and when we look at this our experience in this world we need guidance more than anything else because we are new in this world this is our first time that we are in this world this is our first adventure first experience and when we come in this world we come with no experience with no knowledge we start learning at a school college university we start exploring it we start learning but even if we learn at school or college or university that education can only lead us to so much 
most of that education is only job training doesn't answer the basic questions or the real questions which we have about ourselves or about this universe and from where did we come and where are we heading and why are we here that's a very basic and very natural question just put it in this way that god forbid something happens someone gets into accident and loses the conscious police comes the ambulance comes they pick the person take him to the hospital or somewhere and after a few hours when person opens the eyes the first thing when he looks around the first question is where am i where is this place where i am that is our first question wherever we go and if we don't know where we are so first question is that where i am so that is a question that which we need to ask when we are in this dunya where are we what place is this this dunya and then how i ended up here then they will tell you you have you had accident and this is how police came and this is how ambulance came and this is how they brought you here so person understands why i am there so we need to understand that why are we here just to pay the bills just to go and work from 9 to 5 that is the purpose of my creation that's why i am here in this dunya that allah created me and sent me to work in this company or in that company and then pay bills that cannot be the purpose of my creation that cannot be the purpose of my life so that's a basic question and that question even if you go in the college and best college and best university and get your phd and whatever you will never get that answer that answer comes from allah subhanahu wa taala the creator the one who has created this dunya and the one who has created us and the one who has sent us here and then to whom we are all going so and then how to live in this dunya and how to live in this dunya successfully safely positively to make the right end so that needs the guidance and that is why allah subhanahu wa taala when he talks about quran zalikal kitabu la raiba fi hudan lil muttaqin this is guidance because we were asking for guidance in the previous sura sura fatiha ihdina siratal mustaqim guide us to the right path that was our request and next page allah subhanahu wa taala says zalikal kitab la raiba fi hudan lil muttaqin you were asking for guidance this book is guidance this book guides you to the right path so this book is actually the answer to that dua which we ask in suratul fatiha ihdin as-siratal mustaqim guide us to the right path and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds with this book and he says you were asking for guidance here is the guidance now you read it you understand you reflect you learn and then you follow so my brothers and sisters keeping time in mind uh quran is referred as bayan and tabyan also explanation quran explains all those queries and questions which we have about universe about our life about life here after about our creator and about all those questions which we have how to live our life Quran is bayan and Quran is tibyan 
it's a it very plain and very nice explanation then it is referred as rahmat quran is mercy as prophet is mercy the quran is also a mercy quran allah subhanahu wa taala has sent it as a mercy so that we remain on the right path and we learn from it this is one of the best forms of mercies are the guidance and the guides the messenger of allah is a mercy his ahlul bayt are the mercy and this book is mercy quran is referred as shifa also it is a cure for those uh, sicknesses and diseases of soul and spirit and society uh, our diseases are not only these viruses and these physical diseases uh, those diseases are only for the body can damage only body and at the most they can create the death at the most they cannot do any harm more than death but my brothers and sisters these uh, sp- diseases of soul and spirit they damage more than that those diseases because the effects of those other diseases are only when we are alive the diabetes or the pains or some other these problems my blood pressure or my cholesterol can only hurt me until i am alive when i'm dead it's over but the damages of these spiritual diseases and the diseases of soul and spirit are going to affect me or and are also going to put me in trouble even after death even in barzakh for all those years in barzakh and at the day of judgment i have to face and then these things can lead me to jahannam forever so those diseases are more serious diseases and what is the cure for those diseases can we find at walgreen can we find with these pharmacies and these doctors and these hospitals these hospitals they cannot even cure the corona so cure of those diseases is quran allah subhanahu wa taala refers to it as shifa in chapter 17 and ayat 82 i don't have time to now read these ayat but i'm giving you the reference chapter 17 surah isra or bani israil in ayat 82 2 where allah subhanahu wa taala refers to quran as shifa and as rahmat and also quran is a reminder it is mentioned as zikr reminder we human beings always need reminders and although we don't like those who remind but all of us we need reminders we have these calendars and we have these uh, um, diaries and we have uh, these alarms and we have so many other ways uh, to remind ourselves because we forget this is how we human beings are we learn quickly and then we forget quickly so this book reminds us and it brings us those realities again back to us when we read this book every time we are reminded about very important messages so what do we know what how, what do we do with this book and what we are supposed to do very quickly and very briefly i will conclude this surah al an'am Actually, let look first at Surah Saad, Surah Saad, which is chapter thirty-eight and ayat twenty-nine. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun 
لیدبرو آیات ہی ولیتذکر اول الباب وی ہیو دس از اے بک وچ وی ہیو ریویل ٹو یو اٹس اے بلیسڈ بک مبارک بابرکت اٹ از اے بلیسڈ بک اینڈ لیدبرو آیات ہی دس از اے بک سو دے کین ریفلیکٹ اپان اٹس ورسز دے کین پانڈر اینڈ ریفلیکٹ so quran is not only just even for simple recitation we need to recite we need to understand we need to follow and then we need to ponder upon and we need to reflect do this tadabbur in quran that's what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in chapter 38 ayat 29 this is a book it is a blessed book but they need to reflect and they need to ponder and the people who are the people of reasoning they need to use their reasoning and get the admonishment and get lessons and from this book and inspirations then in chapter 6 surah al an'am ayat 155 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa hadha kitabun انزلنا مبارک فتب ہو دس از اے بک وی ہیو ریویل ٹو یو اینڈ اٹ از اے بلیسڈ بک مبارک بٹ وٹ از یور ڈیوٹی ٹوورڈز اٹ فتب ہو یو مسٹ فالو اٹ سو قرآن از ناٹ اونلی ٹو پٹ ہائی ان دا شیلف اور اونلی ٹو کس اٹ اور ریسائٹ فار فاتحہ خانی فار اے میت اٹ از اے بک دیٹ وچ وی آر سپوز ٹو ریڈ فاؤنڈر اپان ریفلیکٹ اینڈ دین فالو اٹ فتح بھی او اینڈ دا لیسٹ ریفرنس مائی بردرز اینڈ سسٹرز وچ آئی ہیو اینڈ دین وی کنکلوڈ دس لیسن دیٹ از فرام سورا زمر چیپٹر تھرٹی نائن ayat 23 very very uh, important verse about quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says allah nazzala ahsan al hadith kitaban mutashabihan masaniya allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed this ahsan al hadith the best teaching the best word and the best communication which you can ever have or you can think of so this is the best book to read this is the best text to read this is ahsanul hadith this is the best word this is the best thing which you can think of or which you can have اللہ نزل احسن الحدیث دا بیسٹ ورڈ دا بیسٹ حدیث دا بیسٹ کمیونیکیشن دا بیسٹ ٹیچنگ دا بیسٹ اناؤنسمنٹ دا بیسٹ میسج دین دس از اے کتاب متشاب ہن اٹس اے ویری کنسسٹنٹ بک اف یو ریڈ اٹ فرام دا بگننگ انٹل اینڈ دس بک از ویری کنسسٹنٹ اینڈ اٹ ریپیٹس itself also at various its parts to reinforce its teachings because the purpose of this book is to teach to inspire to guide to keep you connected to keep you focused so that's why this book is consistent and this book also repeats itself and its various parts again and again here and there and the that is with purpose that why this book repeats its messages and why does that so then what happens when people read it allah says taqshairu minhu juludul ladina yakhshawna rabbahum the people that who have that fear of allah those who have respect of allah those who have taqwa of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and khashiyat and taqwa when they read this book 
تخشعرو من حجلود دیر سکنز شڈر دیر سکنز اور ایٹ دیٹ ٹائم دے دی سکنز دے فیل دے شڈر ثُمَّ تَلِينُ جُلُودُهُمْ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ And when they read this book, then what happens when they recite this book? Their skins and their hearts soften. So the effect of this book, if we know what we are reading and if we know what's going on there and if we are following, then what happens, this is what Quran is saying, that those people of taqwa, and the khashiyat and the fear of Allah when they read this book what happens talinu juluduhum julud is plural of jild jild is skin qulub plural of qalb there and lana yalinu is when it something becomes soft when it softens Allah says when they read this book their skins and their limbs and their hearts they become soft ila dhikrillah and for the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so my brothers and sisters this Quran opens our heart it opens our mind it softens our heart it softens our spirit it softens our limbs and our body and it prepares us to seek the nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It makes us fall in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have that khashiyat and that taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That comes from Quran. So if we, are, if we don't have those things, it is because we don't either read Quran or we don't read as we are supposed to read. I will conclude here with this uh, um, few couplets of poetry of Iqbal who was a great uh, student of Quran and he says Naqsh Quran chun dar in alam nishast Naqsh Quran chun dar in alam nishast Naqsh haye khahinan dar ham shikast he said, when this uh, image and if impact of Quran, when, when this Quran has impact in this world and it has uh, the, the, the image of Quran and the inspiration of Quran and the impact of Quran when it comes in this dunya, in this society, then what happens? Naqshahaye kahinan dar ham shikast. Then those people that who are fooling around uh, people with their uh, misguided messages and they are trying to uh, keep people busy with those false messages, their impact is all gone. Then they cannot fool around because people see the true teachings of Quran and they see the impact of Quran. Then he says, Fash Guyam. Anche dar dil muzmarast. Fash guyam anchi dar dil muzmarast. In kitabi nis cheesy digarast. Iqbal says, if I want to say what is in my heart and if I want to say it explicitly and openly and clearly about this book, then I would say this in kitabi nis. He said, this is not just a book. It is something else. Iqbal says, this is not merely a book. It is something more than book. It is something else and not just a bunch of pages. Then he says, Chun bajan dar raft jan digar shabad. Chun bajan dar raft جان دیگر شود جان چھو دیگر شود جہان دیگر شود اقبال says when this book its message enters in your soul 
when the message and the impact of this quran comes in your soul then you change your soul your spirit totally you change and then he says it's not only that only you change jan chun digar shud jahan digar shud he said it's not only that this change happens only within yourself but when you change internally and when your spirit and soul changes and your mind changes then this whole world changes for you then you look at this world with different lenses you look at this dunya with a different view and then when this quran penetrates when the spirit of quran the message of quran when penetrates in your heart and in your spirit and in your soul and when you change with the light of quran with the motivation of quran with the inspiration of quran chun jaan chun digar shod jahan digar shabad when you changed internally then this whole external world also changes with it then this world will be totally different for you your interpretation your way of looking at it your way of dealing with it your way of caring about it will be totally different instead of being then the slave of this world you will become the master instead of just dying for it and doing everything halal and haram for it then you will have totally a different attitude toward this and that is all possible if you read quran if you understand quran if you following if you follow the quran so my brothers and sisters this was just as an introduction to the quran and the place of quran in our life and the role of quran in our life and the place of quran in islam and in the life of a muslim as introduction from next sunday inshallah we will have we will start those major themes of quran and also next time i will try to keep this lecture on quran for 40 minutes and then for 20 minutes i will explain some basic masail of fiqh of islamic law basic questions people are asking for taharat and salat and wudu and ghusl and prayer so inshallah we will include those basic masail also in the end of the lecture may allah subhanahu wa taala bless you all thank you very much for listening and uh, please remember me baitul ilm everyone in the community in your duas wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh